Hello and welcome back to Wild Thistle Kitchen. Today I want to take you along as I make some healthy snacks from my pantry. First up we are making some smoothies for Malcolm. He's our toddler. He just turned a year old in December and he loves smoothies. He loves yogurt, anything involving yogurt. So the night, well not the night before, earlier, a couple days ago, I had made some fresh yogurt, homemade yogurt with our raw milk we pick up once a week. I just got it going. I love to get it going at night because I just leave it fermenting overnight. So I just heat the milk to 180, let it come back down to 110, and then I, add, I skim off this cream on top. I save it. I, I find a way to use it. Um, usually I just have it with some yogurt myself. Um, it tastes really good. And I hate to waste all that good cream. Then once it comes to 110, I stir in the yogurt that I had saved from the last batch. I strain it off just to get out any little lumps I might have missed and then I put it in my oven with the light on overnight and in the morning I have nice tangy but not too tangy yogurt I usually let it go for about 12 hours and so I am using that homemade yogurt and some of these bananas that I got from Azure Standard to make Malcolm a smoothie this is some frozen guava. It's just guava pulp. It's really tart, and he loves tart flavors, so we've been adding that into his smoothies and some mango chunks. This is a very tropical smoothie. And it's really good, not just for Malcolm. And then some yogurt. I don't really measure, as you can see. I just kind of toss in, but it's maybe about a cup of each ingredient. A bunch of yogurt and then I let it blend. It's very frozen at first but I like it that way. I don't add too much liquid so that by the time it really thaws it still has a nice thick consistency. And you can see little Malky there helping us. A little taste test of approval and right at this stage it's almost like a sorbet. It's really good and you can see that he really likes it. And these little smoothie pouches, well, they're not just for smoothies, but I got these on Amazon. I'll link them in the description. We love them. They just make it, you know, you can buy those store-bought baby food pouches, um, but these are a great way, a great option for making smoothies and purees at home and controlling the ingredients and they're really easy to clean. I just, as soon as he's done with them pretty much, we just wash them out really quick with some soapy water. And here I am moving on to filling up this big jar with cocoa powder. I just realized um, our cocoa powder was empty so I grabbed this big bag and I'm filling up this little jar my husband uses we keep it by the coffee and he puts it in his coffee every morning but the next thing I'm gonna make are some date balls and they're really good I guess some people call them like date energy balls or bites so I'm using two cups of dates and then I blend those first because it's hard to get them really blended if you add the other ingredients. It kind of turns into this ball of like date paste. So I kind of mush it around once it gets to that stage before I add the other ingredients. And then some peanut butter. Again, I don't really measure this one, but I can leave my rough recipe in the description box if anybody is interested. I don't have this one on my blog, but I should probably add it because I make these all the time. I'm adding about a cup and a half of coconut, just shredded coconut, unsweetened. Some cocoa powder. A couple tablespoons, maybe like a quarter cup's worth, maybe a little more some chia seeds. I'm going to give that a good blend. And then I just kind of like check the consistency. Um, oh, and I'm adding some vanilla because it gives it a really nice flavor. 
and then you just want it to be a little sticky like this like where when you pinch it it stays together and it will still be a little crumbly but I go for a little crumbly rather than like too too sticky because if they're too sticky sometimes they're kind of they almost have like an oily texture and I don't really like them that way so I take about a tablespoon worth of the mixture and kind of squeeze it into a ball shape it's kind of hard to roll because it'll almost crumble if you try to roll it between your hands, but I just kind of squeeze it into a round little ball shape and then I fill up a jar. And these usually last us like a week or two. They're really rich and pretty calorie dense, so they're a nice like pre-workout snack or like before we go for a walk, like if I haven't had breakfast, I'll pop one in my mouth and they really do satisfy hunger and they're also just a nice little treat snack sometimes. Malcolm also likes those. And then just cleaning up. Whenever I have sort of a snack prep or a meal prep day like this, I really force myself to clean up in between each recipe, which is not usually, well, not always the way I operate. I can sometimes make a really big mess in the kitchen and then clean everything up at once, which can be a little overwhelming. So I recommend not doing that. Recommend cleaning up in between. So now I'm moving on to some homemade granola, which I make all the time. And I do have a recipe on my blog and I'll link that below. Although I always make it a little different, which is just how I am. I use what I have and always start out with oats, of course. But then the nuts and the flavorings and the add-ins they always change a little bit. And you can see I've got my little helper here. He's always getting into whatever I'm doing. So I've got my oats in the big bowl, adding some coconut oil to this glass measuring cup that I will microwave. You can, of course, heat it up on the stove if you don't have a microwave. You just want it melted and liquidy. Adding some shredded coconut, about two cups in here some sesame seeds. These are like a flaked almond. And then these are slivered almonds. I like the two textures. It's really good. There's some cinnamon. In the melted coconut oil, I'm adding some vanilla and some maple syrup. You can use honey. You can use really whatever sweetener you prefer. And then I'm just mixing it up with my hands before I add that in there. This is so good. I love homemade granola is one of my favorite things to make and I think it's mostly because it makes the house smell really good because it cooks for kind of a long time at a low temperature and it smells really really good. Really cozy. Then I take that mixture and spread it between two pans. You can use one but it, it'll take a little longer in the oven and you'll have to stir it quite a few times so I like to spread it onto the two pans. And the parchment is nice because it makes it really easy to put in the jar later, as you'll see. So I just add it to a 250 degree oven. And my oven runs a little bit low, so I would say if yours runs hotter, put it on like 200 or 225 because you don't want to burn that granola. And then again, just straightening up, cleaning up my mess before I move on. This is definitely something I've tried to implement lately, especially with Malcolm, because when I have time to get things done in the kitchen, I take advantage rather than leaving it for later because you never know what later is going to be like when you have a, a toddler. <laughs> and then something else I like to do on these meal prep days, which is usually on a Sunday, this one was, is just check like my salts and my butter and my sourdough starter, like make sure I have all the tools ready for the week ahead because when you're in the middle of cooking dinner, you don't want to have to be like topping off your salt or grabbing butter that's cold out of the fridge. And then here I'm just filling up the coffee beans. Actually, Jason is and I'm filming. Um, but just those little things make a big difference during a busy week. And here I am making 
this I actually got started the night before. Um, it is, I guess you could call it a paleo granola. It's for my husband, although I do eat it, it's really tasty. It's made completely of nuts and seeds. It doesn't have any grain, so it's a grain-free granola. And I've been making it for years for him because he does do sort of a paleo, low-carb type thing. And this is just a really nice little cereal for him to have. So you soak the nuts and the seeds the night before in some salted water. If you have a chance, it's good to change that water out like once or twice. I don't always do that and it turns out just fine. And then I add everything to the food processor with some salt and cinnamon. This is melted coconut oil and vanilla. I don't add any sweetener to it because that's how my husband likes it. And sometimes he'll add like dried fruits to it when he's eating it, but I don't add honey or maple syrup to this mixture. Then once I get that pulsed up, I add the sunflower seeds, some coconut, some chia seeds, and some flax meal, some ground flax seeds. Give that a quick little mix. And there it is, all mixed up. And I will add this, the same as the other granola, to two sheet pans with some parchment. And then spread it out. It's really amazing how much this is like a real granola. I mean, if you added some maple syrup or honey I think, I mean, it is, it's just like granola. It's really tasty and it gets nice and crispy in the oven. It takes a lot longer though. It takes like, sometimes like three to four hours in a low oven and I leave it cracked like this so that the it'll really dry out. Um, you can also use a dehydrator, but that takes an incredibly long time. But I guess if, if like raw food is your thing, then the dehydrator would be the way to go. But I just use the oven at like 200 degrees for like four hours and stir it around a couple times and it gets nice and crispy and some of it's in clusters. It's really, really good. So if, if, if you want a grain free granola recipe, I will, I will link the one that I reference for this. Of course, I don't follow it exactly, but I'll link that one in my description. And that's it. That's our full day of pantry snack prep for the week. I hope you enjoyed this video. We are still participating in the Three Rivers Challenge, and these are some amazing snacks that we were able to make without a trip to the grocery store. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.